All right, welcome to sample hard problem for electric forces. So I, I created with a problem with four charges, two that are negative, two that are positive, and they are in magnitude two, three, four, and five microcoulombs each. There's a distance of five meters between the left and the right group, and a distance of three meters between the bottom and the top group. Everything else should be symmetrical. So the question is, for this problem, what is the net force on charge A? And this is charge A, this is B, this is C, and charge D. So the approach we're going to use is first do four, uh, first of four steps, we're going to draw all the individual forces and estimate the net force direction. Then we'll calculate the individual forces, then we'll add up all the x components and the y components, and then finally we'll compare that resulting net force with our drawing and model that we have up here on the board. So what I did was I color-coded things right here. So I have red to represent negative, blue to represent positive. So the uh, question is, what's the force on this uh, charge right here? And so because of the blue charge down here, which is positive, and this is positive, it's a repulsing force. So that force has to be upward. When I look at the force caused on A by charge B, which is negative, it'll be attracted. So that's a force to the right hand side. And then because of the even further charge that's also negative down here, we see that we get a force pulling it towards the negative charge in this corner here. So the, the problem then says take these three forces, add them all together and come up with the net force. And so I've estimated a rough direction for that force up and to the right in the, uh, the purple arrow. So I'm going to be using a different equation than what I've used in class because I've noticed there's been some confusion and the real difference is that I put absolute values across the two charge values so that we don't get confused about negatives and positives. We just use our diagram, our picture, to understand what the direction of the force is going to be. So in this case here, the second step then, we've already drawn our forces on the board. Step two says calculate the individual forces. And so I went and already did that here with the force from D, or the blue charge down here on A. And so I went into K times Q times Q, and that's also in units of microcoulombs. And I squared those units, so 2 times 5, because I have 2 and 5 microcoulombs. And then I divided by the distance between them squared, which is 3 meters. So 3 meters squared is 9 meters squared. Then I looked at the force on uh, the charge due to the B charge here, the negative 3 microcoulombs, so that's where I get negative now, 2 times 3, and so 2 times 3, when it's negative, absolute value will give us a value of 6 in the end, and the distance between them is 5 meters, so 5 meters squared is 25 meters squared. And finally, the last one is the force on A due to charge C, and I did that down over here, and so that's another K times now negative 4 times positive 2, and again, microcoulomb squared. And now the distance here, it turns out to be 34 meters squared because it's A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So 5 squared plus 3 squared gives me 34 squared. No need to take a square root at this point. All right, and so now we've added up all of our forces. And now what we do is we, or we've calculated all our individual forces. Now we must look at adding up all the X and Y components. And so when I look at it, I see I've got a couple easy instances here. This one here is going to be all in the positive y direction. The force between a, uh, uh, the force on a due to charge b is going to be all in the positive x direction. The hard part of this problem is then figuring out what's going to happen because of charge c. And so we see that we're going to get a force down and to the right. So there'll be a positive x component and a negative y component. And so that's the key thing to keep track of when you have problems like this that are two-dimensional. All right, so I went over here and said that the force from D uh, applied to A is all going to be in the positive Y direction. So I just said that FDA is going to be FDA in the Y direction only. And punching all the numbers out, I end up getting a value of 10.0 millinewtons. Okay, then when I look at force on A due to charge B, that's all going to be in the positive X direction. And so I look at the formula over here where I did that and I just said the force from B to A is simply the FBAX value or the, uh, the force on 
the uh, charge A in the x direction, and that ends up being a value of 2.16 millinewtons. And it looks like that x could be confused with a y, so I'm going to make sure I increase that size there so we know that that's strictly in the x direction. And then finally, we have our last complicated uh, scenario here. And so we use our equations that are sines, cosines, and tangents to solve for the angle. That would be indicated by this. And so when we look at this angle right here, we have three meters, we have five meters. We can use tangent and say tangent of three divided by five. And when you do that, you end up with an angle of 31.0 degrees down from the negative, or down from the positive x-axis. And so by then plugging in the correct formulas to break this into its x and its y components, we see that we take the total force and say total force times cosine theta will give us the x component, and then the total force times sine of theta will give us the y component of that. And so if we're going to expand that out just a little bit, we see that we've got this one force going towards charge C. Here is charge A. We figured out what the angle is. That's 31 degrees. And so if I want to get the, well, let me make that 31 with a little degree sign. And so I want to get the x and the negative y components out of that by using trigonometry. And when I go ahead and do my calculations, I see that the force from charge C on charge A in the x direction only is just given by our original magnitude, FCA, which we went and calculated over here. And we multiplied that now by cosine of, you can add in the negative sign if you want to, since this is down from the negative x-axis. And you say cosine negative 31, when you punch that all out, you're going to get 1.82 millinewtons. Does that make sense? Yes, because we see that that component should be in the x direction. It should be pretty close to the hypotenuse, since it's pretty almost the same length, so it should be slightly less than the hypotenuse. And so that's how we get a value of 1.82. Then to get the y component, we're just going to take this net force and take the sine of that angle times that net force. So that's where we get FCA times sine of negative 31. And that equals negative 1.09 millinewtons. So the negative sign is a good thing because we see that the force should be downward as well as to the right. And so we should get a negative y component for that. Then, adding up all of these components now that we've got the individual components, I go ahead and add up my x components, taking my 2.16 that I got from my b to a, the simple one, and then I take that component of the ac interaction and I add that, the 1.82 that I had over here, 2.16 plus 1.82 gives me 3.98 millinewtons. Then I look at my y component, and so the force in the y direction, the net force then is going to be this positive 10 that I got from the blue, blue interaction. And then I'm also going to have to take the negative y component of the AC interaction. So I have to get this part and subtract that from there. And that's where I have this negative 1.09. So I take my 10 from the blue, blue, and I subtract my negative 1.09 from the blue, red interaction out of the corner, the lower right hand corner. A negative charge, and so that results in a magnitude of 8.91 millinewtons. And so that would work as the net force in that kind of a representation, or uh, you could also write it as a total force by then taking this squared plus this squared, taking the square root, and you would get 9.76 millinewtons, and then calculating the angle as well, we'd get an angle of uh, 65.9 degrees, and so if I were to write that in, I would have an angle here of 65.9 degrees, and the total length would be 9.76 millinewtons. And that would be my final answer.